Hello, everyone, and welcome to Adobe Live here in the UK at midday. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, that's fine. You can go ahead. You can do that if you like, but you won't be able to get involved in the chat. So come along to be.net slash Adobe Live and join us there so you can ask questions of myself, Tony Harmer, your host, and my fabulous guest who is returning to us today. It's the lovely Raquel Costa. Hi, Raquel. Hi, Tony. Thank you so much for that great intro. Um, it's really nice to be here. Uh, so thank you to all the Adobe team for having me once again. Um, and thank you to everyone who might come to, to, to watch us talk about uh, illustration and storytelling and, and all the fun things that come and join the two together. I hope yes. you, you enjoy yourself. <laughs> I think everybody's going to have a great time today. It's so, so good to have you back on. Uh, today so let's just have a quick look at who we've got in the chat already because mm -hmm. as you know and as I tell everyone because it's the truth we have the best community here so there's some guy called Tony Harmer in the chat I've never heard of mm, him and another guy called him. Tim don't know him either Aok <laughs> Jane Bradbury she's in and Sean Kosel good and tag and Angus is in the house hi Angus and Oliver's here yes it's Organ Doris and yes, it's so good. So everybody's happy to see you. And they're all saying hi, Raquel, which is really nice. <laughs> hi, everyone. <laughs> great so to have you. It's good to have everyone here. And uh, I'm sure that we're going to have a great time today. What will we be doing today, Raquel? What's the, uh, what's the order of the day for you? <laughs> yeah, so... Um... I've kind of been building on on what I've started to 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 do here on my Adobe live stream. So uh, to catch up on anyone who might have not been here for the previous sessions, I've always, in some sort of way, been talking about um, ways in which you can work a visual language to create certain effects or to create certain styles and certain moods. So. First, I was uh, talking about creating stylized characters using line expressiveness and texture. Um, then we moved on to talk about color uh, in a way to, to uh, create more, more um, impact and expressiveness yep. and emotion to, to, to characters, for example. Um, and what I thought would be interesting to, to, to develop is in a, in a, in a broader sense, it's kind of an understatement that when we create any illustration and we use color, uh, we're always adding uh, some some kind of emotion to the image and mm -hmm. color always communicates uh, something. So when we're using color, we're setting up an atmosphere, uh, even, even though we might not be aware of it. So yeah. what I would like to talk about today is how we can uh, intentionally create certain moods and certain atmospheres uh, using uh, color, uh, yeah. limited color palettes and, and some lighting effects, even <clears throat> simple lighting effects, nothing uh, too complex to intentionally kind of enhance the storytelling. So yeah. um, you might have noticed it's something that, that usually I, I like to talk about because it's, it's a part of my process. Uh, since I, I've been working largely as um, an, editor, uh, an editorial illustrator and children's book illustrator. So yeah. uh, the, the storytelling part is what informs everything, what informs yeah. every decision. So uh, apart from what the things you think about when you're building a world and you're designing a character, then the way you bring it to life with, with color and the, the light setting, it's what really communicates What's kind of what's going on? What's it's it's yeah. it's the mood? Is it a mysterious, uh, broody mood, or is it cheerful and hopeful and energetic? So those are the, are the kind of things that I usually think about when choosing color palettes and creating this um, uh, some simple lighting effects. So I would like to 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 show you guys a little bit of my process doing it and. Also, I would love to hear your thoughts. If you have uh, any thoughts that you'd like to share or any questions, I'd be happy to answer. So let's, let's make this a conversation where we can all just keep learning from each other. So oh, fab. Uh -huh. Right. Well, I can't wait. Let's dive in, <laughs> shall, we, shall we get? Yeah, so. I'm, going to, I'm actually going to start, as usually, with a short selection of, of examples from my portfolio that I would like Good to plan. show you. Um, because 
yeah, it, it, it leaves a little bit, bit less time for, for the demo, for, for, for drawing live, but I think it, it, um, it compensates by what it adds in, yeah. in, in information about how things uh, uh, come to me. Yes. So, and also, I'm, of course, I'm, some, of, uh, some mm. of our guests here, this will be the first time they've seen you. So that's kind of... Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's, right. it's a way for them to know, to, know, to know a bit of my work and what I've been mm -hmm. working on. Um, so this little piece that I have here is actually a really old illustration, quite, quite a few years now. And it's just an example of um, when I first started realizing that I could... Uh, use uh, uh, color and lighting effects yeah. uh, more intentionally to 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 really build an atmosphere. So, when I started out as an illustrator, illustrator, I had this um, this inclination to think the rainbow, all the colors of the rainbow, were at my disposal, and so I should use all of them because in reality we see every color that exists. And then I started realizing that my images lacked hierarchy, they lacked some focus, and of course they lacked in, in that uh, emotional uh, impact that, that really mm -hmm. makes you dive in and, and really uh, connect with the move that uh, I'm trying to establish. So this is, was part of, from, uh, part of a series that I created for a magazine, like a, a baby care magazine. And it was one of the first times that I experimented working with a very short color palette with complementary colors, sort of in the, in the blue and orange mm -hmm. yellow tones. And the lighting effect is really, really subtle. It's nothing special. It's nothing fancy. But it's just the fact that you have some, um, some, 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 some uh, harder highlights than I usually I used to paint everything with uh, with soft edges and uh, and uh, lots of uh, gradients or simply flat colors and I started experimenting with working with flat colors but trying to um, make the shapes more volumetric adding these harder highlights mm -hmm. and with a, with a little bit of the of the of the rim rim lights that you can see like there's a window open and a strong sunlight in the morning is hitting the the window and of course it's a soft color palette because it's a baby care uh, environment and a mother is caring for her baby so you want everything to be soft and cute and really lovely and you want to feel like the the bright warm sunlight is hitting the window and it's making everything warm and fuzzy so yeah. And this is the way when I when I first started intentionally working these things into my into my illustration work, and I have a few other examples from kind of a, a diverse range of, of styles and and approaches. And so I'm just going to move on to to another one. It's it's a, a more recent work that I did for for um uh, a um, for a music festival for the for the posters of a Portuguese music festival. And even though the visual language is completely different, it's not uh, so so childlike. But uh, I translated into this visual language the same uh, concern about having a limited color palette, not necessarily with complementary colors, but something that uh, in that in that range of of harmony. And uh, I, I kept working with uh, with the, some smooth gradients and and some some of those hard uh, shadows and, and and highlights just to give a hint of the of the volume and then I started working those kind of um, enhanced lighting effects with a little glow a touch of glow in the moon that connects to a touch of glow in in that thing that I can't remember how to say in English that you use a guitar with yeah oh, a, a plectrum a plectrum <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah 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 exactly use it to play the guitar and uh, uh, in, in this case, for example, the, the glow is what I use to, to, to create kind of like a, a focal point in, in the image to, to, to drive the, the eye and the attention to that, to that point. So you have kind of like this diagonal line that, that's formed by the characters and, and the monument, but it's really leading your eye to, to, the, to that glowy object. Um, so moving on to one other example. Kind of in the, in the in the same style of of character designing. These were some character studies that I I was doing um, um, like two or three years ago when I was uh, 
um, researching and testing for 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 a comic that that uh, I think I've already shared here on on a previous live stream. I will show you a page from it, and once again, still same concern about creating a very very limited color palette, kind of like with just two colors and really working with the shades and the really really um, uh, hard highlights mm -hmm. just to enhance. And uh, well, not enhance, but to 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 really focus on what 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 matters here for yeah. it's, it's the character's expression, it's his face. So that's where the light is hitting hard, um, and uh, that's what what I what I've been using to to create this uh, kind of focus. And another experiment from from that time, that's so uh, it's here. <laughs> and for example, here um, the experiment goes a bit farther because. Um, this character, she looks really, well, not, not very happy, or is she, she looks like, uh, maybe she's mean, maybe she's upset, maybe she's just, uh, I don't know, working some, some tough st things, uh, in her mind, but she's not nice and, and happy. And she, she kind of looks like, um, she looks a bit mysterious because you, you can't really understand what's going on with her face. You can't understand what's going on on her mind. So I thought, well. If I create this kind of like um, dim light environment where there's a dark room uh, and there's some light coming in through some closed blinds, uh, just narrowly hitting her face, mm -hmm. it will allow me to, to highlight her eyes and put the focus on those tense uh, and yeah. on that tense I mean, expression. This is, this is definitely somebody seeing who doesn't want to be seen, right? There's, a, there's an element yeah. of that in this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so the, yeah. Even, so even when it's uh, a very simple drawing, very simple illustration, mm. these are the really um, cool things that you can do just to to imagine the story behind it. So every every character and every picture might have a story hidden behind it. So it's it's cool to to create these little elements that might help you that give clues to 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 understand what's going on and what's what's the bigger story uh, behind it. And this eventually is what I, I worked into to this comic called Mise en Abim, uh, a comic that I illustrated, a short story that came out in 2020. Um, and this this whole comic was worked on with a very limited color palette, mostly in the in the in the complementary range of the bluish tones and the orange magenta tones. And it was really, really important for the storytelling because it doesn't have a lot of dialogue. It doesn't have much narration. So it's the color and the kind of lighting effects that goes into, into the, each page that creates that mood of um, late afternoon, early evening, when something mysterious might be uh, hiding around the corner. Who is yeah. this couple? Where are they arriving to? Uh, what What's this house? What's this landscape? And um, to give this this the, the, this story needed and called for this kind of env environment, something more yeah. demure and low key, because you, time is important, and so color and the and the, and the lighting effects and the shades help um, guide you through the page uh, with getting the mood that you're supposed to be feeling in, uh, when you're looking at these characters and, yeah. and their story. So, I mean, you, you, I was very lucky in that mm -hmm. you shared your English translation of, of this yeah. with me. <laughs> it's such a beaut beautiful story. The layouts uh, are fabulous. Thank uh, you. It, it's a surprising <laughs> story. And it's actually, it is a wonderful piece of work. And what you've managed to convey in so few frames is is incredible. I do hope that other people get to see that at some point. You know, the English translation yeah. is so, so good. <laughs> Even though there are very few yeah. words needed in it, but it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a great piece of work. And the colour really does enhance the whole thing. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, so, so thank you, thank you for those uh, kind words, Tony. I'm really happy that you're that you became a fan of, oh, <laughs> of our hugely. short story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and well, um, anyone that might be interested in reading the story, they can, they can just send me a message later, and we'll, we'll, I, I will guide you through how to to get your hands on on the story. So, moving on to yet some different pieces of artwork. So this is um, this is actually a, a private commission that I did a few years ago in which 
color and lighting also uh, played a very important role because this is for a couple, then they're in love and they want to portray kind of like a special moment, uh, uh, evoking something that they, they usually like doing, is, which is going on a, on, a, on a walk outdoors and doing a picnic and sharing their favorite things like their books and their photos and their coffee and their toys. So this was supposed to be kind of like a really soft uh, kind of late spring, early summer day when you're uh, laying on, on, on the grass underneath the, the cool shade of the trees. But it's kind of like a warm day and everything is light and everything is, uh, it's all about uh, joy and happiness. So all the colors are, are soft. And once again, you'll notice that it's, it's, it's always kind of a, a, a limited uh, color palette working somewhere in the range of the complementary uh, colors. Not something that, it's not mathematical, okay? You, you don't have yeah. to uh, draw a line from, from the color wheel to one, from one point to the other. It's not always that that tight, but it's something that you, it works when you're, when you're looking for, for good harmonies. Uh, when you want things to, to really come together and, and appear like they're all connected and they're all part of the same, of the same um, theme. So it, it usually helps bring things together. And so here, the, the, the thing that I started working it with was also uh, if, if sunlight is coming, uh, is coming through the trees. So there are some, some points in, in, you can see it in our, in our characters uh, bodies and in their clothes light hits them with a with a warm glow a little bit harder than in some other parts so um i started working not just with uh, direct color painting but exploring more how to work with uh, uh, adjustment layers and and different blending modes and photoshop so that i could uh, uh, create this warm glow effect that worked really really nice and then hopefully we'll have time to 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 dem demonstrate a little bit yes. how, how I yeah. use them. Uh, yeah. And so moving on yet again to a similar kind of project. And this time it, it, it's still a romantic setting with, with a couple that's sharing like a carefree moment running through nature with their pet cats and their pet uh, rabbits. And it's kind of like late sunset the sun is almost gone and the moon is, is already shining and the stars are coming out and the fireflies are coming out and you can't even really tell what's fireflies and stars so it's it's kind of like um it's like kind of like there's stardust everywhere so yeah the it's idea like a link that... from the universe into the foreground of the picture that's the way i say i think it's fabulous yeah and it, it was it was kind of like that the idea that yeah. inspired and uh, and so they're there's uh, they're running towards that magic so to that downpour of, of stardust and mm -hmm. and the stardust is coming to, to join them and meet them so it was supposed to be a, a hint of a, of a magical environment and when you when you work something uh like like a, a late sunset and really early night into a picture i think it, it almost inevitably gives this romantic feeling because you you're working with the the purples and the the, the dark blues and then all, of course always contrasting with the with the warm yellows so for me this is kind of about openness and and um and joy of course but also uh, a really romantic feeling that's mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, embedded in, in the image so uh, once again you see that this um these little uh, dots that i created for for the uh, for the fireflies uh, it's just it's it's super super easy technique it's just paint white dots and then had some warm glows with with a blending mode. Choose like a warm color, like a an orange, or sometimes even a, a, a light red, and use a like a, a color dodge blending mode and create this kind. Of, I think this has a, um, a technical name that uh, that uh, I'm not. It's um, it's the I think I was checking my notes. Color simulation. I think mm -hmm. when you have uh, a kind of like a white spot that's kind of supposed to be a light source and then you overlay uh, a warmer color 
with a chosen blending mode to create this effect of a, of a, of a warm, a warm glow. glow. Yeah. Yeah. So so I started experimenting with that uh, with the previously uh, and and really think it worked well here and sort of carried on oh, just wow. a little bit here. One one last uh, scene that's all about. Um, something romantic but also adventurous here so the the story about this is that this is the the, the meeting of of a couple a couple with two girls that are one is is an archaeologist and the other is a, it's a forensic anthropologist so they are meeting together after going on a on a on a on an adventure to to excavate some hidden treasure uh and the hidden treasure that they find is something well that that's that's personal to them uh i will not go go into that um a lot but the thing is um what i really wanted to capture with this image so it's also late afternoon or it, it's sunset is, is 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 coming out and stars are starting to to appear so there's not much light in the environment but i really wanted uh, even if you don't know the story, you don't know exactly what's happening. I want it to be obvious that they just found treasure and yeah. treasure glows. <laughs> so it does. Yeah. What, uh, what, I, what I really uh, had, I kept in mind when I was working on this piece was, was Indiana Jones. I'm a huge mm. Indiana Jones fan ever since really? I was a child. Yeah, I love, I love it. Especially the, the the first three movies, which were the ones that I saw as a kid, and I kept thinking about that 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 adventurous theory that I had, and in my mind, from what I remember at least, when he found treasure, treasure used to glow. So yeah. this this was one of the ways that that I that I wanted to to um, uh, use light to to create a focal yeah. point, to to really highlight the, the, the faces of our protagonists and um, tell you if, even if you might not know the story behind the picture that. They just found something that's important and that's treasure and that's giving them uh, warmth and, and joy. So, yes. another example. Moving on to 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 some um, different things. This this is a page from from a children's book that I that I worked on that came out also in 2020. That's um, it's a Roman and Greek um, mythology book. Okay. So the, mm -hmm. This <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this this is a spread about the the, the Olympian gods. Um, so oh, Hermes. See, yeah. Hermes and Harry's and Athena and uh, Ephestus, I think it's the, the English name. And um, once again, limited color palette. I wanted to, to I always imagine Mount Olympus um, hidden in the clouds and it's always kind of a, a, a golden sunset around. So I made sure to work with this purple and magenta and yellow tones for, for the sky. Uh, I, I, I try to, to reflect those stones from the sky in the clouds because I think it really makes everything come together. So the, the, the color of the sky and the skylight re reflects a bit on, on, on the objects around. So the clouds catch up a little bit of that color. But then Festus is working on, on, the, on, on the weapons for the gods. And so he's working on kind of a, a new lightning for Zeus. And you can see that it has kind of like that same effect with uh, just a very flat shape painted in full white, and then with a with a with a soft um, edge that's giving it the effect of that warm glow uh, of something that's being heated in in the fire. And every every time there's something that's supposed to be kind of magical happening, uh, you get this this glow. Same as here with uh, Hermes. That's whistling, that whistling because, <laughs> yeah, because you might have not noticed, but he just stole uh, Athena's shield. So he's, he's whistling, saying, I don't know what's going on and just uh, going around my business. And so it's another very subtle way to 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 work with this uh, color and subtle lighting effects to um, to help bring things together and add those little extra details uh, of, of storytelling. For, for the picture and I actually have one more from from this book so you can see a completely different setting Ooh, because the stakes <laughs> this and is, 
Yeah, yeah this is this is the underworld, and so you you start off by seeing the, the Cerberus, the, yeah, C- Cerberus, the, the three-headed yeah. dog, and because this is the underworld, it's basically hell. So I imagine that the lighting wasn't supposed to be warm and fuzzy and golden and pink. So you had to be green and kind of like a sulfur light. So you had some 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 reds, of course, but mostly these these bright greens that you have everywhere and that I really explored uh, in, in this kind of backlighting effects in, in our, uh, in, in, in the damned and in uh, Caron, Caronti? I Caron, think it, it, Caron, yeah. Caron in, Caron, in, yeah, in the, English. The Caron. Yeah. Um, yeah. So all the green light is uh, reflecting on our characters everywhere and here we, you have uh, Cronus being punished uh, by the Psycop Cyclops and all the damned without that green fire below. And so it's kind of um, another example of limited color palettes working with greens and reds. Also, uh, it always ends up being with complementary colors. So yeah. because it's, it's what happens uh, with complementary colors, they, they tend to create harmony. Uh, and it, it doesn't have to be like the, the super bright red with a super bright green. You, you can work with tints and shades and create this, this balance where things feel uh, connected. And um, it, it helps you create a, uh, uh, some d- uh, dynamism in, in the image that will guide your eye yeah. and know what things are, are, are uh, connected to each other and, and how. So... Uh, reaching nearly the the end of my selection of works to talk about uh, these things. And I have uh, another very different example from, from a book that I illustrated in, also in 2020 uh, called Noah. And I wanted to, to show you these things in, in comparison because when you, you look at a picture like this, a spread like this, it's a really, really full page. And there's some detailing with uh, with line work and lots of uh, texturing and hard shading and, and hard lighting um, and lots of information, lots of characters. And you don't ha- always have to have uh, that to create a very, very simple emotional effect through mm-hmm. color and lighting. So this is a really, really simple scene, a simple image. Uh, the background doesn't even have a lot of detail. I didn't bother to paint all the objects in in the background because in the end it was irrelevant because what i wanted to show was that there are two characters two young girls that just went up into an attic that's full of stuff everyone has attics full of full of stuff and there's this kind of light bulb hanging above them that's allowing them to see the treasures that they're, they're discovering the letters the, the postcards the photographs the old photographs and so what I wanted here was to to really make the background receive, make the background not important, but not leave it blank. So I just did loose line work for for the object, made just kind of like a really neutral gradient in the in the in the brownish tones, and then just let the light bulb really bring the characters into focus in in the foreground mm-hmm. and started exploring even with the, with the effect of that those little rim lights that you can see on, the, on yeah. their faces you can see there are little bits of dust that that's glowing because of, of the light bulb so even when uh, an illustration doesn't have many many elements and many many characters and it's it's not uh, really really tight in terms of details when it's something more painterly and and loose in terms of the of the drawing, yeah. you can still create simple effects that will that will allow you to to um, convey added emotion. And because what I wanted here was to add a, a sense of joy, and and they're discovering things that they didn't know existed. So it's also the the, the same as the the other piece back there where they're finding treasure. So treasure has to be uh, glowing, or at least something must be glowing on on what you find. So this is another example of how I I do it. And um, this is the little piece of artwork that that I would that sampled in the in the in the cover of of um, of our session of our live stream today, mm-hmm. and it's uh, one of the the most recent illustrations from this from this selection. 
Uh, and just to give you a context, this is actually uh, the illustration for the cover of one oh, okay. of the Secret Seven uh, books, the, the Portuguese edition of In Enlightened Secret Seven. So this is for well done Secret Seven. And so I've been doing the, 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 the covers for the, the new edition, for the new Portuguese edition of these books, of this collection. And um, I hadn't really portrayed a nighttime scene yet in, in, uh, in the previous cover. So I thought, since there's this uh, dramatic moment uh, in the story when two of our main characters from The Secret Seven, when they find uh, another character that's uh, invading their space in, in the tree house and they want to know who he is and they want to know what he's doing up there. Um, so the, the Secret Seven, they're mostly very, very secretive about their yeah. club, so they don't want anyone to know what they're doing. <laughs> and um, I wanted to show that, that it's, it's nighttime, the, they, they, they discovered that there's someone hiding in their tree house, so they went with their flashlights to, to, to investigate, and um, they discover their, their um, uh, not, not, well, home invader, let, let's call it yeah. like that. <laughs> their uninvited um, guest. <laughs> the uninvited guest, at yeah. least. And so I didn't want a really dark image because this is for a book cover and for a children's book cover, nonetheless. So I wanted to be obvious that it was kind of like nighttime, but I didn't go full, full dark nighttime with really, really dramatic lighting because I wanted to keep some warmth and some, and some, some of the vibrant colors. And so the way to do that was... Uh, and I, and I, th I think I can show you um, because I have the the, the layered file uh, on oh, on fresco. So let's let's switch and I'll show you a little bit how I ended up building this uh, this image. So just taking a second because it's kind of a heavy file. Um, and so if I open these uh, these group layers, I I'm, I I can turn off kind of like these, this first group. And if I go here into the, the background and layers, I can also turn off these effects here. And so, okay, I think it's, it's enough. So, so you can, you can see. Um, I started basically painting with the, 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 the basic color palette that I have set for these characters and for these covers. So, I just color pick the, the, the colors that they usually wear mm. on their clothes, just darken them a little bit to, 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 to help uh, convey the sense that it's, well, it's, 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 it's nighttime, it's darker, so all the colors will be a bit dark, but essentially it's like painting with, with basic flat colors that could be, if, if not for the, for, the, for the sky behind, it could be daytime. It could be if I if I yeah. paint a really a really light blue sky behind, it could be daytime. Mm. So this is what I what I sort of came to, to to show here today about my process is that don't have to be talking about really complex illustrations with really really complex lighting effects. Um, even when you just want to 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 add a little bit of drama or a, a little bit of contrast, you can start off with kind of like a, a, a more neutral. Uh, color palette and then start building with shadows and with highlights and it will add contrast and it will, it will add of course the, the storytelling depending on what you do so of course I had a dark sky with a, with the with some stars showing uh, behind the trees and then one of the first things that I, that I did sorry not here was add some more uh, shadows, especially to the tree, so they they because if they if they are in in darkness, they will project harder shadows. So it will help the make the volume of the of the of the of the leaves more perceptive. Then adding shades and shadows, um, projected shadows uh, beneath the characters, so that they will feel grounded. And then here, let's open this group is where I actually started working on some added effects. Uh, for example, this bottom layer here. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, it's so subtle. Why is it not letting me? Okay, so it's having a little glitch here. 
because it, the layers which happens from time oh. to time i guess there we go that other layer group there itself is turned off there it you was, are. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's easily done so yes <laughs> Because I had done that, I had hidden the layer group. So yeah. I, now I will hide one by one and I will show you uh, what, I, what I did. So this, this first layer here, if I, if I show you without the blending mode, I have it on multiply, but it's actually kind of like this. It's, so you're I dusty choose, vignette. Yeah, it's a dusty yeah. vignette. It's, it, it, it looks gray here, but it's actually kind of like a, a very light purple a grayish purple mm -hmm. that I used to create that, that it's a vignette effect. So it darkens the edges a little bit because the light source is the flashlight that the kid is holding. So I want it to be the main uh, uh, light source that, that really helps to, to focus that triangle of, of the character. So do the vignette because it will help uh, darken the edges a little bit. And so it will help um, make everything look uh, a bit darker since it's 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 nighttime. And then there's this, which is essentially, if I put it also in normal, it's kind of like a second vignette. Uh, it's it's like a plain uh, flat color layer with this the same grayish purple. Uh, I added a, a layer mask to, to 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 block this this color off of the characters. Otherwise, it would look they would look too blue. The skin tones would would be uh, uh, altered um, much more than I than I wanted than I intended. So I, I I ended up choosing to 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 hide that from using a mask. And so these this allows me to reinforce that vignette effect and, and create that bluish uh, environment light that you get in in nighttime and then moving on once again one more layer no this is the same same one moving on to the next one this is where i start with the the highlights so uh if i put this on normal you'll see that i chose a very light uh, yellowish tone. This is what's supposed to be kind of like the 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 the, the, the rim lights and the, the the highlights that are created because of the fat with the flashlight. So um, light just spreads and it hits the tree. So you'll have those edges that are sort of backlit or or directly lit. And what I like to use for the highlights are. Um, uh, I use different blending modes for for lighting effects, uh, uh, and, I, and I and I can talk about it a bit more uh, further on. But just to 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 wrap things up, but to to sum it up, actually, when I'm using a, a shadow effect, I tend to mostly use the multiply effect. It's yeah. it's really versatile, and it blends the colors, uh, multiplying the the pixels the pixels from the base layer and the blend layer. Mm -hmm. So. If you have your base colors uh, right, then you you can just essentially work with one or two um, tones for for the shadows, uh, lighter shadows or harder shadows with a with a darker tone, and multiply works beautifully for that. And for the highlights, I tend to to be a fan of the overlay. Um, sometimes so using soft light or hard light, but it doesn't always work as well depending yeah. on the on the blend color and the base layer. So, multi overlay is kind of the the the, the most versatile of the uh, what we call the the contrast blending modes because it really helps maximize the contrast between the 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 dark pixels and the light pixels, and so you get this really nice effect of uh, a glow and some reflected uh, light but you don't really, really alter the base colors that much. So you really get in any kind of illustration, it can be a really stylized or very realistic. And it's a simple, simple trick to, to help you create a realistic lighting effect. So I think it's really nice. Blending modes are, are my favorite thing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And um, well, finally, there's the, the flashlight itself. So if I put this uh, on full opacity, so it's what I painted on was kind of like a, a cone shape coming out of the of the of the light bulb, and then I use the, the the layer mask once again to soften the edges of a little bit and to remove some 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 highlights on on a part that would normally not have light. 
So I think I had this on overlay also and kind of like 60% um, opacity. And essentially I removed the lighting from that part behind the tree where it's sky. So the flashlight won't reach that far. So you won't no. have highlight in that, in that part. And so this in short is kind of like a summary of a process to, to in any given illustration have a basic scene with some neutral colors and then just add the the mood and the atmosphere with the working with the shades and working with the with the, the, the highlights and and using the, the appropriate blending modes to create these, these effects and so here it was all about mystery and drama because clearly there's a flashlight pointing at somebody that doesn't look very happy looks uh, concerned and nervous so there's drama and there's tension in the image and um i think the the the, the color and lighting effects help convey that at least yeah. well i hope i hope so <laughs> it's the, the underlighting for, from the face adds adds quite a lot mm -hmm. of drama to that as well with the with the flashlight Exactly, exactly, yeah. because it helps keep a, a, a really dramatic effect on, mm. on, the, on the character's face. Yes. Uh, and so, so this is for my really, really extensive intro. Uh, time really flies when you're talking about fun things. Um, <laughs> it does. So maybe, maybe I, can, I can move on to, to, to do a short demo, at least, well, as far as I can, I can take it. Yes. Uh, are, you, are you up for it? <laughs> yes, definitely. Absolutely. I've got to give you a couple of things from the chat. First of all, your work is going down nice. fabulously well. And Emma is saying that it's nice to have you with us uh, again. Oh. I'm sure myself and the entire chat would uh, echo mm -hmm. that. Sandrine asked a question earlier on, which mm -hmm. I think you might have actually answered by the journey. Let's have a quick look and find where that was. I think it went from, because you said about all the colours of the rainbow uh, to begin with yeah, right yeah. okay so her question to you was from all of the colors of the rainbow to your actual more limited palettes how did that uh choice present itself over time so i kind of think you've sort of answered that with with showing us the progression of some of those works but was it a conscious yeah. thing did you think you know i want to just it, narrow it, these down I think it was a conscious thing because um, when I started out working as an illustrator uh, and well, I had a background in, in, in arts and in fine arts. I hadn't specifically uh, learned all the craft, all about the craft of illustration. And um, I figured, well, I know how to draw, I know how to paint. So I, illustration is just creating drawings and paintings. And I had to learn that it was not just about that. Uh, while uh, building my, my my illustration career, and what I what I noticed, and at first I didn't really really understand why, was that I had some pictures that worked really well and seemed really really tight, and some others didn't, and I couldn't exactly put my finger on and nail what what was wrong because mm. well I did them both both the same and this one works beautifully and I, I look at it and I don't know why but I, I think everything looks together and it looks um, like embedded in, in like in the same uh, yeah. fabric and some pictures looked off like like I had cutouts that I had just uh, pieced together and mm. something was was not working and so the, the, this was a process of trying to figure out what was going wrong with the pictures. And eventually what I came to learn was when in, instinctively I chose to work with very limited color palettes because that's how I imagined the scene with, uh, with those elements, it ended up working nicely. And when I started painting uh, furniture with all the shades of brown and golden and the leaves with every shade of green and the sky always blue and you know all yeah. that oh, yeah, yeah. I was painting with all the real colors and still things didn't look realistic to me mm. and 
of course, uh, a large part of went into studying and analyzing other people's work, the uh, professionals that I admired and the, that I knew were, were nailing it in, in every single picture and, and reading, of course, about uh, techniques of working with, with, with color. And I haven't stopped since because uh, it's, it's, it's always a, it's a journey, not a destination. And I think I, I learned every day and uh, the, the more I, I talk to, to people, to other creatives and the more I hear them talk about their process, the more I keep integrating things into my own process. So it's, it's, it's really helpful to, to put yourself in this mindset of always learning and, and always trying new things. Uh, even though at first I was um, super scared of trying new things, uh, but, but, but I see the advantage of, of keeping that explorer uh, sort of mindset. Yes. And and so th that that was it. Uh, I, I knew that I, I I didn't I lacked hierarchy and focus on some images because there was no no way to distinguish the detailing in the background and in the middle ground and in the foreground. Everything was with the same color intensity, with the same detailing. And so um, it was not just a process that I went through uh, with uh, working with color, but in in building the compositions in general that. I progressively uh, went on to try and build hierarchy, uh, b uh, making the backgrounds less detailed and more loose uh, and, and choosing the colors appropriately so I can have that, that distinction and that, and that focus on what I really want to be the highlight of, of the image. And the thing about the limited color palettes was uh, something that I discovered when I was studying these things and trying to, to learn how to, how to really uh, fix some things that were that were not working for me in my in my illustrations. So um, it was a, a conscious process. It's uh, um, something that I've been working on ever since, and yeah. hopefully doing a little better by now. Oh, I think you've nailed it. But <laughs> to be perfectly honest, but there you go. It's brilliant. But okay, let's um, okay. let's crack on then. It's all good. So. Um, for today, uh, I, I, I brought something just a little prepared. I brought a little sketch so I wouldn't, because I, I knew that this might happen, that I might start talking and talking and talking and uh, not have so much time for, for, for the demo. And so I imagined a very, very simple scene where there's this young girl, she's outside, she's reading her book, she looks happy, uh, but serene. Uh, she has a little companion. This, it's kind of like a, li a little bunny or it can be an imaginary creature. Who knows? Uh, there are no impossibles in illustration. So any scene can work to create an atmosphere and every detail that you choose to add can help build on the, the, the storytelling. And uh, for example, she, she's barefoot. She has her shoes uh, next to her. And what I imagine when I started thinking of like, well, how I'm, go I'm going to paint this, I imagine her clothes are all dirty. So she's been spending the day outside, but what could have been, uh, what, what could she been up to? What, what, what was she doing? Why is she barefoot and dirty? And immediately I started getting into this like, Tom Sawyer, uh, getting this yeah, Tom yeah, Sawyer yeah. vibes. Yeah. And, and then she's just um, relaxing, enjoying uh, her book, uh, kind of like at the end of an adventure with her little uh, companion or maybe in the middle of an adventure, who knows. And so uh, what I'm, I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to do to, 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 to help you, to, to show you what, what in, in practice, these things that I've been talking about, um, I'll lay out some really basic colors, and then we'll talk about how how we can uh, create these lighting and shadow effects to 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 help enhance this this atmosphere yes. of uh, uh, joy and adventure and this this warm and fuzzy feeling of of being happy with your little friend um, on a happy day. So yes, let's put this on a. Angus, by the way, Hello. is saying in the chat that uh, you can sense the glow on her face even without the shading or lighting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank lovely. you, thank you so much. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Um, I'm happy to hear it because, on another side note, that that ties to what I was talking to answer Sandrine's question. Uh, one thing that I learned also was that 
we artists uh, are our worst enemies when we say, oh, this isn't, this drawing isn't exactly working, but I'll just fix it in color. And <laughs> for me, that's not been my experience. Uh, yeah. If it's something really subtle, yeah, okay, you can fix it in color. Uh, yeah. But the, 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 the basics of the composition and, and the, the, the feeling that you want to convey with the expression and everything, it can be a really, really rough sketch like this one is. It's not very detailed, but you have to try and nail it uh, from the beginning. Otherwise, it, it, it might not uh, come together in the color and then you'll have to do it all over again. So um, just a, um, one more um, snippet of, of what I'm thinking about when I'm working. So um, let's start with uh, some neutral... Kind of like tones for them for the background. I'm just gonna choose from the the brushes here. As you might know, I'm a fan of Kyle Webster's brushes, yes. and yeah, there there are so many and so so varied that uh, you can you can essentially start maybe so Sarah. to. Uh, Sarah is asking in the chat. Sorry, um, mm -hmm. you, I'm not sure. I can't remember. Do you work in Illustrator ever? Because she's asking if you prefer uh, Illustrator or Fresco. I prefer Fresco. Yeah, uh, I thought, and, I thought and, that undoubtedly, case. because um, I, I I do work in Illustrator sometimes. Because apart from my illustration work, I also do uh, graphic design work, mm. and and of course, it's inevitable. To, to have to, to to work with Illustrator sometimes, mm. um, and of course having vector vector illustrations, it's 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 a plus. It's so it makes mm. everything so versatile. But uh, you might have noticed that my my process is it's much more uh, my digital illustration process. It it, it tends to be more like a um, a mimic of what I do when I use the traditional materials like yeah. watercolors and gouaches and, and pencils because I, I enjoy the process of painting like that and I enjoy the, the, the result. So Illustrator I use for specific, I also do illustration work with uh, with Illustrator, but uh, it's, it's more on a graphic design approach and yeah. when I have to do illustrations for the web. Um, and But the thing is, now that I have Fresco, what I do is I create the illustration, the vector illustrations in Fresco with the vector brushes, and then yep. I just move it on to Illustrator to clean things up a little bit. And uh, so it's 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 been a um, a really 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 nice nice experience for me to 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 explore Fresco. It's it's such a great tool. And okay, so. And just trying to not the best brush for this. Let's put this one. Just trying to make it not so dark. Okay, so you have the ground, the foreground. Then I will add uh let's see so th this is doesn't have to be another layer let's start adding some background elements like foliage let's choose kind of like a maybe a bluish green i am um, i remember I, I have a little trick for draw for indicating foliage and i kind of think you might use the same trick um from i was mm -hmm. looking at this earlier and that's to draw m's you know the letter m so I just do loose curvy M's <laughs> in places, and it's a quick way for me to develop uh, foliage. Yeah, uh, guilty. And okay, I thought so. Like, like like this. So yeah, just yeah. yeah, just draw little M's, and then when I'm when I'm when I'm adding um, ink work, I just mm -hmm. literally do a quick sketchy M here and there, and just collections of varying size <laughs> M's. Yeah. 
Uh, you you might have noticed that that I, that I did just that was it, the illustration that I was showing you with the with the, the treehouse previous yeah. yeah the treehouse I did that because yes. I didn't want to, to to waste too much time detailing the tree because it was a background yeah. element and it was really really large and so I wanted to block in some some shapes really quickly and then uh, um, it's a, it's a helpful way to add some movement with uh, the brushwork sure. the M. M looks really, really, really nice, and then just uh, just use the line work to create Bring out, those yeah. little the extra M's. Yeah. So, not super excited about the the um, the tone of this. What what do I want about this this green? So I might just finish this to 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 block in the 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 shapes, and then I'll probably change a little bit afterwards. Um, so when I imagine this scene, she's kind of like maybe either in a, in a little back garden or already on the edge of the woods, maybe. Yeah. Just a, it's a really nice and peaceful corner where, where she likes to, to hang out. Because who knows, there are so many funny creatures lying around she can play with. So let's see. No, I can keep using this. And uh, one other thing that, um, that I started working on when, uh, when I wanted to focus on on creating better hierarchy and using color in a more uh, in in intentional way to create mm -hmm. certain effects was to um, use it also to 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 help me add depth okay yep. so so shapes in in receding into the background and i tend to paint them a little lighter shapes that are in the foreground tend to be a bit a bit darker and hard edged yeah. so not like that. aerial perspective of the uh... yeah yes. yeah so yeah. let's just make this up a little and those basically are like their value decisions right when you're yeah when you're yeah. Doing Essent that out. yeah essentially essentially and uh can reinforce it by um, in the using using a, a lighter tone just to work on these top parts here. I honestly think I could watch you work all day. <laughs> oh, Tony, wouldn't that let's, be wonderful? Let's set up a webcam. <laughs> I'm just going to test. Yeah, I'm gonna, and uh, I'm gonna take a week off. I'm just gonna... <laughs> and we can we can chat if we're if we we're chat. not doing. We could both actually. We could we, we should could both do that. Be, yeah, we should yeah, both we work. Can... <laughs> yeah, should work dates. That'd be cool. Exactly. I think I think it's uh, we got something uh, going on here. That, yes, it could be it could be fun. Yes. So, okay. Tim's just... just said Adobe Live twenty four hour streaming coming. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> okay. Challenge accepted. Oh yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Hey Tim, we could do mm -hmm. uh, we could do like an Adobe Live sort of. T do, do they still call them telethons? Those things where you raise money ah, for extended yeah. things. That would be that would be kind of cool. No. <laughs> Tim just whispered <laughs> in my ear delicately. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Uh, she's leaning onto a little rock, so I'm gonna color pick on this and I'm gonna do it with, yeah, you can, can keep using this. So you might, you might notice that, that in, in, in essence, I didn't put down my 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 initial method of, of painting because it's it's not a it's not a rule. You don't have to to do it mm. like I do. You can if if you have uh, um, 
if you have a, a clear vision of what the, the final image will look like, just painting directly with the, the, um, the final colors, including the, the, the lighting effect and, and the shading, it's, mm. it's totally fine. For me, I, this is what's worked because it, it was a way for me to, to develop and build on what was uh, my initial process. And then I, I thought that I could uh, uh, use it to, in, to, to improve a result. So I start well, with a basic colors, basic effects, mm. and then just build on top of that with, with, with shading, with, with highlighting, with color correction. So changing the way you do things from time is you know it's is human which of course we are uh, yeah. which is a good thing i think also if you become too too formulaic about your approach mm -hmm. that's when things run the, not necessarily they will stagnate but i do think you run the risk yeah. of stagnating because you won't discover anything new if you if you don't you know vary your approach and try new things out Exactly, mm. and and I was really really resistant to to, to that. Um, I, I I I said it earlier that I was uh, kind of uh, sort of not not scared, but I I didn't like to try new things because I thought learning things uh, mm. it's a lot of hard work, <laughs> and then once <laughs> you learn something, why not just stick to it? Yes, uh, and then well, I came to see the error of my ways because then exactly that's when stagnation occurs, and that's what happened to me, and so not good. <laughs> I'm a yes an adv advocate for 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 exploring and for trying new things these days. So one thing that uh, that I um, enjoy if if I'm working for example on on photoshop is that i might take advantage of of the adjustments that i said before when i'm not happy with the with the with the colors i can start just um, adding an adjustment layer for the hue and saturation for example for the levels and adjust things uh directly and um so it's 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 a nice way to to even if you're not absolutely sure if you're if you're nailing the the, the color palette that you're that you're um, that you're using, you can still start filling things up and then changing them and correcting them along the way. I love this already. <laughs> And I'm trying to be super quick and and doing and control myself to not over detail and just uh, lay some basic shapes because otherwise we'll not have time to to do anything interesting. So just trying to, to at least have some volumes. Yes. Well, we're good. Nice. We've got half an hour and some change if we need it. So okay. we're good. Mm -hmm. and so sean's saying uh so raquel does not have a set palette to start with just going uh, going oh. with your gut i guess really saying going of her head but you know actually uh sometimes i do and and um mm. this this was i have to 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 admit it would it was uh something that uh i should have worked on uh, for for the session, I could have chosen the color palette beforehand. I didn't do it, and it, it's 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 not um, it's not the best decision. So it, it was not it's not a, a, a an intentional process of just going with with your gut. It, it can it can it can happen, and it can work sometimes. But I think it's better if you test things out and um, and uh, and if you have a plan. And uh, I. I, I plan to have a little bit more time to 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 explore some some options for the mm. for the for the image, and I ended up uh, having some unforeseen things to deal with, and I didn't have uh, so much time, and so I just went with what I had in in my head. But ideally, yeah, I, I yeah. test out a color palette with like. If, if, if I'm going with uh, three or four basic colors, then I choose just um, another two or three accent colors for, for, for detailing, trying to think of um, 
of value and having some darker tones and some some lighter tones that you can build nice contrasts and harmony with so uh, that's that's what I what I tend to do but today I didn't work on that so shame on me uh, I have to uh, that's all good build it. <laughs> it's all good and of course one of the wonderful things of Raquel is that mm -hmm. we're working in fresco and fresco has adjustment layers so you know if, yeah, yeah, for yeah. example you if let's just say you were moving on a little bit further and you thought oh do you know what i really i'm not mad on yeah. that sand color oh, or that green sorry. color you can just yeah. go ahead and drop an adjustment layer on there clip it to that layer underneath and then just tune it as you want you know it's yeah it's all exactly. good so that's what i'll be doing yeah and so andre just... sorry i was just gonna say andre in the chat yeah, is saying yeah. the great thing about these brushes is that sometimes there's some visual interest to start, just like the textures of the watercolors, and so. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, and since since I was um, when it, when it, when I started out, I knew that I was I wasn't going to have uh, much much time to 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 create the, the the illustration with what I usually do with lots of layering of of, of kind of th these. Uh, painterly brushes with some crayon brushes for for mm. all the little details. Uh, so when when I have to do that and work uh, and quicker, the way that I choose brushes is trying to find the ones that will give me this kind of like nice texture to to begin yeah. with, even if I'm not able to to create lots of um, of layers. So this is our. Okay, so I'm going to start putting in her hair. She can have dark hair. So cute. <laughs> Oh, bunnies. I miss having... We used to have bunnies. I miss really bunnies in our garden. Yeah. <laughs> I used to... I, I, I think I had one or two uh, bunny pets when I when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was I was really, really, uh, really young. So I, I can't remember really, really well yeah. what, what it was like. I just remember that they were cute, but they didn't... I didn't have them for very long, so it must have not been a great experience for at least for my parents. Oh. But they're they're really cute. cute. <laughs> Tim's just, Tim's just put uh, a thing in the chat that says they know more talking about that. So there's a song title from <laughs> from my fictitious album called The Bunnies No More. And he's just dropped that in there. It's very funny. Uh. And Sean's <laughs> just saying, but you have emus now. That's funny. Well, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. The emu is always making the thumping. It sounds like <laughs> someone's got a drum that's just boof, boof, in the morning. The, we have emus next door, Raquel. Really? Really? Yeah. Yeah. And uh we've got a we've got a miniature dachshund called Buddy. And uh they Aww. are fascinated with Buddy. And when Buddy goes out running around, there's a paddock at the top. When he goes running around in there, the emus will follow him. <laughs> Oh, that's 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 so wonderful. I, it's I, cute. I don't have emus, uh, at least not around where I live here in Portugal. So I, I've never seen one live. Actually, I think they're quite big. <laughs> yeah, they're I, quite big. I get, I get that. And they're a tad on the violent side towards one and each one of one another. Really? Yeah, every now and then. Violent. You're, you're here. It sounds like somebody hitting a piece of wood. It's like a really loud knock, and it's just that one of them has whacked one of the other ones with its beak. It's so loud. The uh, it, it's totally in character because they're yeah. so funny looking. So it, it oh yeah, it makes, it makes sense that they have that kind of behavior. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're very fast. And Tim's saying, "Where do the emus sleep?" I suppose they've got an electric bird's nest to keep them warm. Yeah, wow. nice one, Tim. <laughs> There's a fe the festival mm -hmm. in Lisbon you mentioned to me that the one with the unicorn in it the mm -hmm. something Trojan. is a the yeah, Trojan's Trojan unicorn. horse 
Yeah. Trojan horse was a unicorn. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. It's, yes. It's happening. It's happening in September. Yeah, uh, I think in, in, I looked and I'm on the vacays, I think, when uh, when that's on this year. Because I, w- I want to come over and... and uh, you should totally come, Tony, if you can. And uh, yeah, you, you might, you, you you would be a great speaker for the event, actually. So oh, I'd just, just like to come along and watch. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to just hang out also. We could hang out. Really yeah cool. that's that's perfect so if uh if you want to come um just yeah you'd be very welcome and we'd love to, to have you here <laughs> i would love to do that i'm just having a quick look uh uh unfortunately i am speaking at the photography show when that's oh. shame otherwise <sighs> You, maybe see if we're open to negotiation. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe some other, some other time. Oh maybe no, I'll factor it in for next, next year. I think. Next yeah. year, yeah, because it's it's a really a really um, wonderful experience. It's a it's a great event with with well, uh, people like in this great community. So it's a great community mm. also of people uh, willing to to learn and to share knowledge with everyone. Mm. It's, it's a great networking opportunity. Um, and, and everyone's really, really, really great. And it's, um, it's, I, I believe I mentioned it earlier. It's what it was where I met Julia. Zier. Julia. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Our host who ended up inviting me to, to start doing this, she did. these live streams. Yes. So that was really, really, uh, serendipitous for me. Yeah. <laughs> Do you go to Angoulême as well? Did you? I haven't been yet. No, mm. unfortunately. But um, I would like to visit someday. Yes, mm. it would be very, Me too. very nice. So, but have you ever been? No, or, no, no. It's, yeah. it's going to be been. also. Yeah, yeah. Julia picked me up a fabulous book from Angulem. Well, actually, it's a print collection. Um, mm. Just trying to find it. <laughs> Everything's moved yeah. in here. I don't know where anything is anymore. But yeah. But no, uh, mm-hmm. she she did. Uh, she was very excited by meeting you. I know that. So. Um, I was. I was as well. So, uh, let's see. I might need to start putting some extra detail here. Character. In fact, the first picture I put up in in this place uh, the other day was one of uh, Yulia's pictures. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's the very first one. Oh, Sandrine uh, she... says her sister mm-hmm. has a regular stall in Angoulême. Cool. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's that's uh, that's nice. Yeah. So she's a she's um, a comic artist, or maybe I'm waiting to find out i'm, I'm kind of hoping to just <laughs> uh, angus says it would be a good stream uh if we if it was us two and yulia as well that would that would be cool oh i wouldn't mind that at mm. all it would be really really fun i i never had the the opportunity to to be on a session with uh, with yulia and mm. well i can't complain because i got you and uh, <laughs> you're the best host oh <laughs> but Aww. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think we always uh, have uh, we get a great well. time. We do. We get on well. But uh, it would be fun to have Julia with us. Yes. Sometimes. So just giving, laying it there, the suggestion. Well, I mean, Julia and I, we get, on, we get on well too. We, we met each other in India. Really? And, uh, so yeah. far? And we've been really good friends ever since. I mean, we used to speak every day at one point oh really that's yes. wonderful she's really smart yeah she's also she's a great communicator and educator also mm, yeah. she is yeah um sandrine's just telling us about her sister now the one with the stall at angle mm-hmm. uh, she's saying with her partner they do a book slash fanzine uh, she Aww. doesn't illustrate uh, he does. Uh, she prints. Oh, she's a screen printer. Ah, cool. so cool. That's really, really cool. Yeah. 
I really, I really like screen printing. I, I, yeah. I tried it. I tried it a few times in art school. So. Yes. It's a really d dirty, but but really fun it's cool. process of of image creating, right? I like all forms of non mechanical printing. I do. <laughs> I mean, I used to, I, I started out as a printer on a press, but the um, I I kind of like so we do lino cut in here, um, mm -hmm. yeah, bits of intaglio, so mm, I like all that stuff. Monoprints nice. used to be my favourite. Yeah, screen printing. If I had the room, <laughs> I'd definitely get a table up here for that. But. Yeah, you need you need the studio space, right? Mm. Mm. Now I've got two tiny, well, not that tiny, but two small um, uh, line and woodcut presses here. So one on rollers, another one that's uh, that's pre downward pressure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, They're quite heavy. <laughs> but I, I look I imagine, at some. I imagine they are. <laughs> mm. Yes, they are. I I like. I follow on Instagram lots and lots of people who make lino cuts. Especially really, really huge ones because I can never get my head around it. You know, ones that are maybe, you know, yeah. two meters tall and just, just crazy. I don't know how you lift on that. Exactly. <laughs> insane. Oh, and Sandra is talking about Rezo. Yeah, Rezo printing is... Uh, join... Um, Gabriella Marcella's uh, little Riso Club, uh, mm -hmm. Sandrine. And that way you get a discount on that. Plus you get a little mailing uh, a few times a year with some nice uh, some nice prints in it that you can use as postcards. This is shaping up beautifully, by the way. Well, thank you. And it's, I'm, I'm doing my best to keep it really uh, loose. So we'll have time to get to the the cool part mm. of um, fine tuning the colors and adding some some effects. Mm. <laughs> Tim saying I also have a printer in my studio. Probably not <laughs> the same thing, Tim. <laughs> it's run out of yellow ink. Is refusing to do anything. <laughs> oh. Okay, so let's detail this uh, a little bit more. So, si since since I'm 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 working with this uh, sort of um, mm -hmm. style of of, uh, the, of the children's books that I that I usually uh, uh, work on. Well, that that was that was rubbish English. Since I'm working this in the style of that I usually work on my uh, latest children's books, it's it's a more um, painterly approach with a more focus on on texture and 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 evident brushwork. I'm keeping it helps me keep things things a bit looser. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm hoping that in the end. The, the basics will, will be here and we don't need to have a super neat and tight picture. And um, in this case, I am, as I'm detailing a little bit, I'm adding just a few uh, basic uh, lines and, and, and shading just to, to help uh, shape the, the volumes. But if needed, I can, I can add and build on them later. Mm. I do wish that the the color. I know you can float the color panel in uh, yeah. fresco, but screen mm -hmm. real estate is kind of at a premium <laughs> on a tablet, right? It's yeah, it is fine if you're on Windows and you're on a on a on a device that can handle uh, fresco, but on an iPad, uh, even on an iPad Pro. Mm -hmm. The, you know, I just don't, I don't like lots of interface. The only thing I yeah. do wish that I could do is float a small version 
of the uh you know of the color wheel or which yeah. i could expand to controls if i needed to but mostly as you're doing here you're using the hsb picker and um yeah i just wish exactly. there was one that hovered around yeah that, that you that they could move to 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 either side when you when you need it yeah, yeah it would be it will be really really cool to be mm. able to do that and Okay, so I'm just trying to dirty up. I mean, I also her. know that I could suggest that feature. It's pointless me having <laughs> it in my own head. <laughs> but, well, hey. <laughs> so she has her dirty clothes, whatever. Yes. A day's happened. adventuring. Yeah. It's. Uh... Have a little bit here on her arm. And so we'll go back to this. And so I really have to, to get things going. So let me just okay first no first things first i have to finish the, the the girl so let's see can add some basic shapes here uh, okay her shoes could be yellow or red maybe something And forgive me if sometimes I go no, no, no! It's all quiet. good. It's all, we're all we're all being quiet. Just watching you. <laughs> yeah, I tend to to sometimes um, go a little bit quiet when I'm when I'm in the zone. So, um, what do you what to... do you normally listen to when you're when you're working? Or do you do you have silence? Or do you listen to podcasts um, or music or just whatever the mood takes you? It, it, it depends on, on what I'm working on, because um, uh, if I really need to be uh, focused and, and, and concentrated, for example, if I have to write emails or, or write something, oh, yeah. um, I, 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 I can't listen to podcasts because then I, I, I'm not I'm not a great multitasker. So so I, I, um, I have to, to, to rely on music. But um, so mostly it's it's music that I listen to. Um, and I, I, I like a, a wide uh, variety of styles, styles from jazz and rock and indie music. Um, so if I have to be more focused and, and concentrated, I will, I will prefer music. Um, but sometimes when it's just, uh, if, if I'm just painting, if I'm just executing something that's already been thought of and, and planned, then I can, um, can listen to some podcasts. Yeah, I'm the same. Yeah. I, I can't, I find other people's talking distracting when I'm trying to actually yeah. draw and work an exactly. idea out. Mm. Exactly. The same. So nearly have the basics of the character. Well, I really wish I could uh, detail it a bit more, but uh, it will have to be done <laughs> maybe later. Um, but I just want to, to show you the, the basics, having all the elements in, so at least we can uh, see some, some, some of the options that, uh, that we've been talking about in the beginning of the session. And so, uh, 
super sure about the final color for the, the bunny as of yet, but um, for now. Mm -hmm. I just want to make note that he's here. So it's basically just rough sketching with color at this point. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to, what, 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 what did I want? I want to hide the sketch so I can um, look at the basics that I've got here. And, um, okay, so let's see, we have the, the, the girl and what I want is the, the foliage. So let's put an adjustment layer here and I will do the clipping mask to apply it just to the to the foliage. Yeah, and maybe, so this is what I was talking about. I start building the image and I have the bushes and the greenery and I think it's, it's gonna work fine, but then it doesn't because I always end up with the, the I'm thinking of a sunset uh, here. Yep. And so naturally um, tending to the to the bluish and purplish tones to, 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 to make the contrast, so. Uh, in here, in this case, I'm going to also add another adjustment layer also with a clipping mask and then just maybe pull this into uh, a sort of more pink, not so light. So useful, isn't it? That, that yeah. yeah, yeah, indeed. Uh, okay, only thing that I forgot was that I painted this little bush uh, with the, <laughs> with the in another layer with the, with the rocks. So it's no problem. I'll just, uh, can you bring it. it into that clipping? Uh, yeah, I, th I think I can, I think yeah. I, I, I was going to paint over it, but let's just, uh, try it. If I can, uh, select it and then what, what do I want to do? Want to I cut want the selection, I think. So. Yeah. Cut the selection and then let's try and paste it, uh, here, I think. Paste selection. Okay, so it pastes as a clipping mask, but no problem because I will just remove the clipping mask and then I will merge it down. And yeah, now there we have go. it. There we go. So uh, what I'm missing here uh, right now is a sky and some some uh, some shadows, some reflected shadows, and then some some basic highlights. So. Um, if I want to start with, let's see, start with the sky. So I don't think I have anything in this layer. That's what it's for. So let's see here. And the sky can be also in, let's color pick it here in the yellowish, pinkish tones. Oh, what's happening? Uh, is it a mask? Uh, yeah. I was painting in the, in the wrong layer. Uh -huh. So, okay. Um, I want to give the sense that it's sunset and the light is coming from that bit here, that circle around the the bunny so i'm gonna bring a, a warm yellow a lighter tone to this part maybe even lighter and the other part will go a bit darker and a bit more extreme with the pinks Peachy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. So, since everything is sort of uh, really rough, 
I'm not going to do a lot of blending of the colors, just going to leave it with the, with the texture. I might try and use a little bit of the blue if it, if it works. Yeah. Just a little hint of the sky that's getting darker. And so now we'll need, of course, some shades. I'm going to set this layer to multiply. And the, the, the kind of tones that I usually choose for, for, for shading uh, are, especially if the base colors are, are on the warm side. Yeah. It's kind of on the, on the, the purple spectrum. And uh, it doesn't have to be uh, a really, really bright purple. It can be uh, a grayish purple. Then I'll see if it. Uh, and that will come through need. in those. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, just so you know, hard... by the way, we actually are at the end of natural time, but yeah, we yeah. have a little okay. bit of extension time for you if you need it, oh. which I'm sure, which would be lovely. Yeah, just to, uh, maybe a couple of minutes just to to get to the part where we can uh, add some some lighting effects also, since okay, I'm putting some shadows beneath our character. <laughs> really, really rough. It tends to have longer shadows at sunset, so I'm really pulling these to the side. And, okay, since shadows are mostly done, what I might do next is work on some more ambient light effects. Okay, so uh, there's this rock that's not really volumetric, not very, very detailed. I can try and use the, the shadow to make up for it a little bit. And yeah, these harder tones. So. One more thing that uh, I can do is, let's see, from the favorites, if I have the basic brush here. No, I think not. So let's go get the basic, maybe this one. And OK, I will create a new layer here with the multiply effect, where I will do that sort of um, vignette style. Let's increase the brush a little. That grainy effect. That's just to, to, to help create that that feeling of um, of light receding. You have a light source that's um, that's in the background, that's in the sun is setting over the horizon. And so all the 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 landscape that's near us in the in the in the foreground can can be a bit darker, and this can I, I could take advantage of this. Let's you know, let's go for the recent brushes, so I can use my rough glosser. I can use it to increase the not not. The shadings on the on the character, but what I really wanted was trying to go through the brushes quickly, and here it, it is. So could add some harder shadows to the to the rocks, help the volumes pop out a little bit more. It's so lovely. <laughs> really charming. Oh, and, I, and I'm, I'm just barely uh, thinking it's, it's whole instinct right now. So I don't waste <laughs> too much time <laughs> in unneeded things. And I hope it's at least coming out perceptively for, for you guys. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Oh. It's gorgeous. Just so you know, um, 
it's going down very well sarah saying lovely piece of work angus is saying great stream uh, thank you raquel tony and tim more would be good <laughs> sean says this is so good wonderful work raquel thank you oh uh, thank you guys for 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 joining us and thank you for for being with us and and uh, mm. staying so long even after okay so you can so these are the the things that I might detail a little bit further along along the road. Uh, of course, the, our our bunny would need also some some shading. It's just some blobs of color to yeah. make up for it right now. And well, if I wanted to to, to finish with some some lighting effects, so th this was what I would do for the shading. And and uh, oh, never mind the fact that I still haven't done the the ends for the the. <laughs> for the foliage but yeah as you can see yeah yeah it's huh? quick though right it's fabulous <laughs> fabulous little technique yeah it's, a, uh, it's really 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 nice and interesting so uh i can add a final layer for for the highlights and once again i uh, will go back to the soft brown opacity brush i will choose one of the the warm yellows that i've been using maybe something like like this and what i would do is kind of like create this okay so i'm doing it on normal mode so yep. uh, we, we can see Here kind of like glow. If, yep. yeah effect coming coming out and then choosing the, the the blending mode so there's color dodge which is great when you want to go really really extreme mm -hmm. Uh, because it, it really uh, saturates the the, the midtones and completely blows out uh, blows up the, the the highlights. But I think it's a bit too extreme for this setting. So once again, I'll be going with with the the the, the overlay, and I will try to soften these edges a little bit. So trying so to. Warm so warm. Okay. Uh, Sarah's saying your drawing is glowing. Uh, I think you've inspired Sandrine to uh, to do a bit of drawing. She's saying, I learned so much today. The Apple Pencil is itching. Yeah. So, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Michelle saying, beautiful illustration. I will watch the replay. Sean yeah, saying, and I'll, I'll do my best. Yeah, boom. I'll do I'll do my best to to uh, eventually create a, a more uh, complete and detailed version of the, of the illustration if if I can because I think it would be it, it, it would be nice and it's fun I really I really like it and yep. to find it to finalize um, another layer on overlay mode and I would just now add not with this brush uh, with a with a finer brush I'm just gonna add some final uh, backlighting, that more extreme glow in these bits where you have the backlighting. Oh, those from, nice catch the, lights, yeah. From yeah, from from the sun, you could have it here on some of the of the foliage, on some of the rock, this little part here, and also on the foliage on the side, just a little bit, and um, yeah, I think that uh, that's gorgeous. That's, that's it for for the time that we had today yep. so oh, i'm trying to put this together i'm just going to try and put a little signature on so uh let's see if i can nail my own name so <laughs> i always struggle with mine <laughs> <laughs> oh it's so, so lovely fernanda so is saying it, it looks cozy and warm Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Um, uh, it was a, a, a challenge for me to, 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 to do a full piece on, on under, what, less than an hour, I think. Uh, I really, really wanted to, to, to make it today. I wanted to, to get to this finish line and have you at least get a hint of, of the basics because you can have more detail and more definition, but if the basics are there, you can just have a, a few a few basic blobs. <laughs> so I hope everyone enjoyed it. And no, thank they you for, did. for joining I us today. I did. Mm, lovely. Thank really you. Lovely. Thank you so much, Tony. It's been uh, it's been wonderful. 
as always. It, it has. I have really, really enjoyed it. I just wish we could have gone to a two-hour stream. I would have really enjoyed that. Maybe next time, because <laughs> I'm sure yeah, you'll be who back knows? with us, who knows? Uh, Raquel. But thank you, everyone, uh, for joining us today. Don't forget, we're back next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday uh, of next week. Uh, so come along same time, midday, on be.net slash Adobe Live. But from Raquel and myself right now, it's goodbye. So see you later. Have a great rest of your week and a lovely weekend. Take Bye. care now. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.